All right, before we get started on this episode of Weightlifting Academy, which is an interview with Caleb Ward, my friend, and one of the best Olympic weightlifters in the country, uh, I want to remind you that every episode of this show, Weightlifting Academy, is brought to you by Seven Deadly Sins of Olympic Weightlifting. That is a free ebook that you can get by going to weightliftingacademy.com and clicking on the right sidebar. It's pretty obvious, it's huge. You can click it, boom, it's got a big old pretty image. It's the Seven Deadly Sins of Olympic Weightlifting and how to avoid them. These are the seven things I think every beginner has got to get down many of which are in your mind, something that me and Caleb talk about at length here in this interview, the importance of your mind when it comes to lifting that bar above your head. So before we get into it, make sure you check out The Seven Deadly Sins of Olympic Weightlifting, your free ebook that you can get at weightliftingacademy.com. That's weightliftingacademy.com. All right, let's enjoy the show. Okay, welcome back to another episode of Weightlifting Academy. I'm your host, Nick Horton. This is the only show dedicated to putting 10,000 new lifters on the platform in 2012. And I got some guy with me here with some awesome hair. What's your name, brother? Uh, my name is Caleb Ward. Right on. So, uh, Caleb, you've been around the scene of Olympic lifting for a hell of a long time, my man. Yes, sir. You have, and you're not particularly old, though, so that... that that the length of time you've been in the sport, it belies your current age. Yes, it does. I have been in the sport for 10 years. I started in 2002, right before I turned 12, and just turned 22, so just past that 10-year mark. Damn. 22, yeah. and you've already been in for 10 years. So I know. So that's a little unusual. I mean, you started, especially for Americans, it may not be unusual for Chinese lifters, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> for Americans to start at 12, that's really young. What, how, how did that happen? How did you come across weightlifting at all? Well, um, Glenn Pendley was in Wichita Falls, and he recruited my brother when my brother was in high school playing football just for kind of strength training. And um, I always knew that I wanted to be in an Olympic sport, and yeah. my brother told me, hey, you know, this, this sport is, you know, it's, it's in the Olympics. And at first I was kind of like, you know, iffy about it, but one of my friends from school was in it, and that kind of convinced me to go in, and I went in and tried it and loved it, and uh, I'm still here. <laughs> That's pretty awesome, man. That's yeah, yeah. Talk about being in the right place at the right time. Yeah, no, exactly. You know, I was still really flexible, and, uh, you know, I was kind of in that molding stage of my life yeah. where, you know, it just took, and I stuck with it. That's pretty amazing, man. So, uh so why don't you maybe quickly lay down some of what you've done so far as a weightlifter, like some of the accomplishments you've already uh, uh, achieved, et cetera. Just well, um, my, um, as a junior lifter, I primarily competed in the super heavyweight class. Yeah. And my best lifts were on the competition platform were 158 kilos in the snatch. In the clean and jerk, I did 203, which at the time that was the junior American record. Yeah, that's uh, pretty darn phenomenal given, you know, you were a junior. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was 19. I, I wasn't yet 20. I, I think I was the youngest to do that in competition for the in the United States. Yeah. Um, and if I wasn't the youngest, I was like second or third youngest. So um, that, that was a pretty cool accomplishment for me, hitting that 200. I, I cleaned 200 in competition when I was 18. And it took me an entire year to get it, the jerk, on the platform. And so nice. it was a huge accomplishment for me. Uh, you know, I, I definitely rank that as probably one of the number one moments in my life. Um, awesome. Yeah, I've competed on two junior world teams. Um, I've been to Bucharest, Romania, and Sofia, Bulgaria. Nice. And I've trained at California Strength out in San Ramon. I've trained at the Olympic Training Center. Um, I, I even trained at Northern Michigan University for a little while. Mm. Um, Glenn has always pretty much been my coach, though, Glenn Penley. And so, um, but yeah, so kind of a cool career so far. Not, haven't reached all my goals yet, so I got, I got some more things to accomplish. But, you know, I've been happy with it. Yeah, that's, that, that's a heck of a, heck of a good road right there. I actually <laughs> want to touch on something. You said it took you a year 
to go from cleaning 200 to jerking 200. So it took yeah. an entire year to complete the full lift. Yes. And I think anybody listening to the show who gets regularly frustrated in the gym that like they don't feel like their progress is coming very fast should take that to heart. That like that is how it works a lot of times. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, like, it, it was, I had cleaned it in practice, and I had cleaned it in a meet, and I had jerked it from the racks in practice. So I had done them separately. Yeah. But staying healthy enough, I mean, staying healthy was a huge issue for me. I, I I just had the hardest time with it. I I would get healthy and start training real hard, and next thing you know, I'd, you know, something in my back would be hurting. And oh, I'd, man, yeah. I'd recover from that, and then something would happen happen with my knee. And so it was just always something with me. And, um, you know, so it, it was that and then just having the opportunity to even try it on the platform while I was healthy. The crazy thing is, is whenever I actually did 203, yeah. the most I've done in practice for the previous three months was 190. So I wasn't even really expecting it that day. We went into that wow. competition just thinking, make the Pan Am team. Do what it takes to make the Pan Am team. And I did that on my second attempt. Yeah. And then kind of surprised me. He was like, hey, go for this 203. And I, I was not prepared for it at all. Yeah. And I credit that for the reason for making it because I didn't psych myself out going into it. I just was like, hey, you know what? 203 is <laughs> going to be on the bar. Just do it. You just smoke yeah. one. Hey, take this 203. So um, I kind of credit, you know, you know, not uh, not worrying about it to make in the lift. So that's, that's awesome. That's 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 really good. I think that's just good advice all around. Like sometimes if you don't think too hard about it, you're probably gonna do a better job than if you do. Yeah, yeah. Like overthinking it, is a it, huge problem. Two hundred is just one of those barriers. <laughs> I mean, right? It's an arbitrary number. Like one ninety nine <laughs> or two hundred one are not substantially different. No, but the word 200 is tough. Yeah, the, yeah. the word 200. I mean, I, I feel like you kind of become a different level of athlete, you know, no matter what size you are, yeah. if you do 200. Obviously, me being a super heavy at the time, 200 was, I was more capable than someone who's 77 kilos, but yeah. um, I think regardless of how much you weigh, I think it just kind of puts you into a different level of lifter. So, Oh, yeah, it, there's, there's not a lot of people on the planet who been able to clean and jerk that much relative to the amount of people who do lifting of any kind, you know, that's a pretty small, yeah. narrow group of people right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. I, I think it's one of the things that's interesting about the sport of weightlifting is that because it's so easy to like know like what accomplishments are because it's just weight on a bar and then yeah. maybe relative to your body weight or something or your gender or whatever, you know, like it's very easy to, to like gauge well relative to other people it's obvious where I'm at. Yes. And what's cool about that is that it's also then easy to know like that you're moving forward. Yep. Because you're like, well, you know, I used to be pretty low grade. I couldn't, I, you know, I was snatching, you know, half my body weight, you know, and now I snatch body weight. Exactly. You know, you're like, whoa, okay, that's a whole new thing, you know. And then the next thing comes and the next thing comes. And I think that that's one of the things I love about the sport is that it's so easy to know the progress is actually happening. Yes. Versus, yes. you know, basketball or something where you're but on a team. But it's also the frustrating part. Yes. <laughs> I guess everything in life's a double-edged sword. Yeah, it can also yes. screw you. <laughs> I actually saw on, um, right before we got on the interview, um, I got to give a shout out to uh, Niagara Weightlifting. Um, I hope he watches this, but um, Mark Gleason, I went up and did a class clinic with him um, back in over with um, Glenn Penblay and he's just an awesome guy he's got an awesome gym and he posted on his Facebook um, in 2005 Dmitry Klokov won the world championship snatching 190 yeah. and practice he's just now snatching like 205 203 something like that that's seven years to make 13 kilos of progress and you know that that's frustrating yeah <laughs> That's just a touch okay. over a kilo a year. <laughs> yeah. The only progress that much in that <laughs> amount of time is frustrating. And so that that's where this sport, you know, that's that's where you lose people. But, you know, it's, that's where you also test, you know, your love for the sport, you know. Yeah. Can you stick with it? Yes. And so, yeah. And the love of just the actual act of training. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So speaking of training, how 
like, could you go over kind of roughly the difference in how your training looked when you were first starting out and how it progressed over time into, you know, when you became more and more advanced? Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, when I started out, like I said, I was just about to turn 12 years old. So I was training like two days a week and sometimes three, you know, it was yeah. just kind of an after school thing. My, uh, my friend's parents would pick us up from school and we would go to the gym. It was usually like a Monday, Friday, Wednesday, Friday type thing. And um, it was pretty much just a snatch, clean and jerk squat workout. Learn the lifts, get good at the lifts, you know, that type of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, and then summer rolled around and I wasn't in school. So I think I started training like three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I okay. competed, I've competed at school age nationals in the junior Olympics. And, and, and that schedule stuck with me three days a week for, um, for, for a while, maybe like a year, year and a half or something like that. And then... Okay. You know, I my dream from the beginning was go to the Olympics, and I was always vocal about that with Glenn. And so, you know, he kind of always kept that in mind, and he would just kind of push me just a little bit harder every once in a while and be like, you know, you've been training for three days a week for a year and a half. Let's kick it up to four. Um, gotcha. So I started training four days a week, and, you know, it differed just whatever was going on, what days it was. But we usually just continued to stick with snatch, clean and jerk, and squat. Um, I wasn't doing a whole lot of the variations like a power snatch or a power clean. We didn't start actually doing power snatches or power cleans till I was lifting maybe four or five times a week just okay. so that I was doing the lifts, but I wasn't, you know, completely tearing up my body. Yeah. Um, but our, our focus for the first couple of years was learn the technique, get good at the lifts, practice the lifts as often as possible. It wasn't necessarily get as strong as you can and, you know, have the highest snatch. I mean, that was the goal, but that wasn't the pressure that was put on me in the gym. Sure. Um, and then uh, I, I think probably when I turned 17 or 18, uh, Glenn was like, all right, it, you know, you need to start training five days a week. Yeah. And um, started training five days a week. And then that that's whenever I started really getting into complicated workouts, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, come in one day and it was like a, a snatch, power clean, front squat. And then the next day, you know, something something different. You know, just kind of crazy programming. How's my body going to adapt to this? How's it going to, you know, make me better? Um, and then just like it had been, just kept getting more and more training. Uh, I think we implemented two days before we started implementing six days a week. Um, okay. So like twice on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, once on Tuesday, Saturday, have Thursdays and Sundays off. And then uh, by the time I got to Cal Strength in San Ramon, I was 19 years old and we were training six days a week, nine times. So okay. um, and that schedule stuck with me till December 2010. OK. And um, I took a little bit of time off after that. And um, I'm still kind of coming back to you know full training from that but i'm yeah. getting it nice man nice okay that's really fascinating so you know with a wrong mindset someone might look at like their first number like whole a lot of number of years of your training and go wow that sounds boring i mean you basically yeah. just snatched <laughs> clean and squatted uh yeah. and and not even much variation of the lifts just the full lifts a couple days a week every week for years on end and, and yet that was a lot of the foundation on you know for why you were able to get to where you got to, and the 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 um, the enjoyment that I found out of it was that because we were practicing the lifts and because I continued to get better, yeah, I you know Glenn has a great technical eye, yeah, was progressing and so it was fun to make PRs and we had a great gym. I yeah. started out at Wichita Falls weightlifting, and I was just surrounded by awesome weightlifters all the time. I looked yeah. up guys so much. Those were my role models. You know, at the, you know, I of course knew the people who are in the USA weightlifting magazine, like Shane Hammond, and Casey Bergener. Yeah. Um, but outside of that group of people, my role models were the people who were in the gym. You know, I had Brett Crossland, Ben Preda, Josh Wells, um, Justin Schlager. I, I'm, I know I'm leaving right. people, but I had so many people around me all the time that, I just, it, it was an awesome atmosphere. It was yeah. a place that I wanted to be. That's fantastic, man. Yeah, yeah. That, 
So yeah, especially given your age at the time. I mean, you're 12 years old, so uh, seeing these older guys, you know, relative to you, lifting some weight that is substantially heavier than a 12 year old is going to be able to pull off. Yeah, <laughs> must have been pretty serious. Yeah, <laughs> I was. I was actually telling someone the other day. Um, you know, whenever I was lifting with those guys, I remember thinking, I will never do that, and not like. And not in my mind that it wasn't possible, but I just remember thinking of how far off it was from me. Yeah. And then, you know, I ended up surpassing all of them. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, that, I think that's a good mindset to have is, you know, if you have the opportunity to lift with somebody who can lift more than you, it's a great motivator in training because when you look at them, they just they look like normal people but they're, you know, they're lifting extraordinary weights. And so it's, it's a great motivator. It's, it shows you that you can do, you know, it shows you you can do anything, I guess. Yeah, that's fantastic. That, that, I, I would have to totally agree with that. I think if you have somebody out there that's, you know, that you can train with, it's just a, even if they're just a little bit better than you, like anything at all, like it's going to motivate you to, to want to work a little harder. Oh, yeah. And oh, sometimes yeah. that little extra work you put in, or effort you put in, it starts to add up pretty fast over the course of a year. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it does. And, you know, um, and, and another thing that I, I've kind of recently gotten into coaching myself, um, I really enjoy it. I didn't think I would, but I really enjoy it, um, is I tell people that you're not lifting t for your full capabilities yet because you don't have perfect technique. And until yeah. you have perfect technique, you're not lifting your full capabilities. And Absolutely. so the better and better your technique gets, you're going to continue to improve as long as you keep training. And so, you know, that, that, I think that's another important thing to think about as well. You know, my, I, I'm at the point now where I'm, I don't have perfect technique, but my technique isn't really going to improve and help my snatch go up 10 kilos. At this point, I need to just get stronger. Yeah. And yeah. so... But it's opposite for a beginner or someone who's even only been lifting for two or three years. They just need to continue, you know, working those lifts. Yeah. So this is, okay, that's a really interesting question. And it's something that I think gets bantered around a lot is the idea of like, you know, this, this push and pull in our sport between technical stuff and strength stuff. Because we're not like powerlifting where it's really just strength. The technique yep. isn't that complicated. No. <laughs> or we're also not like golf. Right, where golf is all technique and very little in the way of strength or power. Yes. Other than like maybe your initial drive. I mean, everything else is mostly just technical. Yes. We're like a weird hybrid of those, and you need both at a very high level. So the question always becomes, well, how do you emphasize one over the other during your training at different parts of the year, et cetera? And everybody's got different ideas on this. How do you I mean now you are moving uh, into also coaching, not just lifting, but you also have a long background of lifting. Uh, what are some of your ideas about that? Like, say for a beginner who is starting much later than you, like let's say they, they have been doing some strength training, maybe they've been doing CrossFit or something like that, or maybe they came in for powerlifting or some other sport. So they're relatively strong compared to the average person. They just never snatched a clean jerk before. If you had somebody like that, who's probably the most common kind of person who comes into the sport, um, what would your approach be? Well, I... And, and this probably is molded from the fact the way that I was brought up through the sport, but um, I, I think that technique is the most important thing. Um, you know, if you look at you know the Russian lifters or the Chinese lifters, they move more efficiently than almost any of the other countries. Yeah. And it's because from a young age, they're that technique it into them, and so. Um, technique is always important, I think, for any age yeah. that you are because yeah. there, and there's two things that go into that. One, the better the technique is, it, it, you know, you, the strength is always going to come. Yeah. But you got to learn that technique first. Two is if you don't have the technique right, it's going to cause a whole lot of injuries. <laughs> yeah. Especially, especially if you're one of those people who is stronger than your technique and you try and rely on that strength more than your technique, it's going to cause a huge injury and so um, you know as far as a stand as far as the standpoint goes for longevity technique is more important and as you know as, as far as what's going to make you better at all technique yeah. is more important to me 
And so yeah. push that technique. Practice the lifts. You know, that Glenn always told me that we didn't um, practice a lot of the variations in the very beginning because the variations can potentially form bad habits. Right. And I believe him. You know, I, I, I think that a lot of people who do practice the variations, they, they do form bad habits. And it's not intentionally. Sure. It's just that they practice the power snatch a lot, so they, they try to power snatch everything, and that's not always right. So, Right, right. If you can't get under, you can't get under. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and so, that's its own skill. It is a somewhat different skill altogether. It, it definitely is. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that, that injury prevention idea, I think, is maybe under-talked uh, about. That, you know, it's not just about getting a big number when you hit a contest or mm -hmm. just in the gym for fun or whatever. It's also, you know, are you going to actually prevent yourself from getting hurt? Because even though statistically Olympic lifting has very low injury rates as a sport, I think part of that is because of the people spending so much time. And the only people who are in the sport for any length of time are the people who spend a lot of time on technique. Exactly. You could easily hurt yourself on a snatch or clean and jerk if you do it badly. Yeah. Because well, they are dynamic. Yeah. I mean, well, and it's dangerous. I mean, you're throwing a yeah. bar with a whole lot of weight around you know I mean, <laughs> it's it's just dangerous any way that you look at it and yeah. so you know i i kind of i don't look at it dangerous for me anymore you know yeah. i'm very confident when i put a snatch over my head that i'm not going to hurt myself but for someone who's not full of that confidence right. it just takes one split second for them to lose that confidence and next thing you know that bar is on their head on their back on their knee anything like that right yeah uh, I, we had a lifter whenever I was a kid who he was doing a jerk and he missed the jerk and didn't pull his foot back fast enough and the knee just landed right above his or the bar just landed right above his knee and I mean that kind of stuff happens. Yeah. So, yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, and and like you said, you said something about it being like the confidence that you have that helps you prevent injury, and that's mm -hmm. interesting. Can you explain a little more about that? Like how, like. It's not just technique, but the confidence to stick with technique when the weights are heavy and scary. Yeah. Well, um, you can kind of put it, like, think of it this way. You know, um, like, I, I know my body very well. And so, you know, I, I know, like, when I pick something up off the platform, I know what kind of mindset that I have to be into. It's almost like a routine. You know, a, a, a gymnast practice a routine, you know, 100 yeah. times a day yeah. so that when they go into competition, they know – you know, that they're going to hit it because they've done it a million times. Yeah. And so for me, you know, the, the confidence is in the years and the numbers that I've put into my snatch, my clean and jerk, that I know putting the bar over my head, I've got that confidence of what it needs to feel like, what I need to do, where I need to push, what muscles I need to tighten up, where, right. how fast I need to move. And so um, that confidence for me comes from doing it so many times. <laughs> <laughs> That, I mean, I just, I know it's going to be there all the time. Right. right. So this is not the kind of confidence that one, you know, is just naturally born with. You're not naturally born confident to snatch. Mm, I, I mean, some people may be, but I mean, no matter how confident you are, 100 kilos is still 100 kilos the first time you pick it up. Yeah. And it, I mean, you could be as confident as anybody, but it, it may not be there, you know. Uh, yeah. I trained with James Mosier for a little while, um, and most people know him. And yes. James was easily the one, the only person that I've ever trained with who is just completely fearless when it comes to weightlifting, full of confidence. And yeah. you know, he could. Uh, I think the first day I trained with him, his PR snatch was like 150, and he put 155 on the bar, and he missed it eight or nine times before he made it. <laughs> And and so I mean that 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 confidence was there with him, but I mean not everybody has that all the time. But yeah. or, I mean and it it's still heavy the first time you pick up that PR, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that's that level of confidence. Like if you're not James Moser, uh, <laughs> <laughs> then this is something that you have to think of as a skill. Yes. and train over time to become more confident with this weight. And it's just a matter of practice. Like, you're not confident when the first time you drive a car. No. You're yeah. Not at all. <laughs> and that no. is also quite dangerous. Yes. But you figured out how to do it. Exactly. And now you get behind the car, you know, easily. You just wake up and do it. So 
I, I, I think the snatch and clean jerk is very similar. It's, you know, that you build that confidence over time. And yeah. it becomes, yeah. you know, even though the weight changes, it becomes kind of like a routine. You know, you, you have your routine walking up to the bar when you grip the bar, and then your technique is your routine as well. You know, if, if yeah. something yeah. is off in your technique, then, you know, your routine kind of goes wrong. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's all about the confidence and, you know, what you put into it. Yeah. So about the technique stuff, you uh, you definitely said you're you're more for doing full lifts when you're first learning. Yes. Is that right? Okay. Yes. Um, does do you have much in the way when you're coaching somebody? Do you feel like you're you're doing any kind of real period is that periodizing of like the stuff that they do, or is it really just you just look at them? during the day or do you have like those are the two extremes I suppose but you know do you feel like you're kind of leaning in one direction or the other on how you would train somebody over the course of a year like that in order to like let's say it's the first year or two of training and you're trying to you know increase their technique and things like that but also just make them a better weightlifter all around you know do you have an approach like that is it like a couple year do you have multi-month year plan for this person or is it really like go day by day I haven't really gotten to that point in coaching. Like, I haven't had someone that I've coached for a year or two years, so no, I don't really have anything specific like that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, by asking that question, I've already got a couple things running through my head. Um, I, I definitely would have someone just practice the technique a whole lot until they get to a solid foundation yeah. where, you know, they're – you know, they, they may get past 85% and start to fail a little bit in their technique, but if they can get to 85% in and in, in with good technique, you know, yeah. then we may start messing around with, all right, you know, we're going to do doubles on this day and triples on this day, and, and we'll probably even do doubles and triples before they get to that point. But, uh -huh. uh, but yeah, no, I, I haven't really gotten to that point in my coaching, but as, as far as things with me went, um, it was always do the full lifts. Um, we did a I, something that was in, kind of ingrained with me whenever I was a kid was if when you do it right, you can't go sit down and take a three minute break. You know, you if you do it right, you got to be ready to do it right again because you've got the feeling in your head and you know what it's like. And so we did a lot of workouts where it was like a lift on the minute for 20 minutes. Yeah. And I ended up making a lot of PRs on those workouts because my technique was better. You know. Sure. Um, and then I, I think as far as squatting goes, I, I think that squatting is kind of a linear progression from the beginning. You know, you're just going to continue to get better. And I think that along with that linear progression in the squats for a beginner, as the technique gets better, it's not so much like how often they snatch to get better. It's, is squatting getting better? Yes. Is their technique getting better? Yes. All right. The lifts are going to increase. Sure. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. So... You okay? So it sounds like you definitely prefer a lot of singles for people learning technique. Yeah, definitely doing singles or quick lifts. You know, I mean, yeah, you know, not a lot of time in between for someone who's a beginner. You know, doing a a double or triple. You know, I may have them do that with lighter weight once a week, um, okay. but I definitely want to see them um, getting to do singles. Okay, and you know, practicing them very fairly quickly. Okay, that's that's interesting. I think that definitely flies in the face of what most beginners are going to want to do. Like, you know, hold, yeah. you know, maybe hold the bar and do five, ten reps at a time, you yeah. know, with either a weight that's quite light for them, maybe too light, or, um, or the other, like you said, like they hit a big lift, like, whoo, I'm awesome, and then they go, you know, eat a sandwich and <laughs> they come back. Like the two extremes there. Yeah, there. take a break and no, you know. Yeah, so you're saying you would like – you prefer with technical learning to hit a lift, you know, take just enough break so that you are rested enough to do it again. It's about a minute or so. Exactly. And do it yeah. again and then exactly. do it again. Okay, exactly. that's that's interesting. So that – you know, that definitely plays out really well with just, uh, you know, there's studies on neurological learning and things like that, motor pattern learning. And that, you know, there's uh, the idea that – you know, of shooting free throws when you're tired, you know, that's an old line in basketball that if you can do that, you'll actually learn faster how to shoot well. Yes. And it sounds like what you're promoting is a really similar concept that you... Exactly. 
you hit a lift, and if you can do that again, and you're slightly fatigued, you know, two minutes is not long, and or a minute or so is not long enough to like replenish uh, creatine stores or anything like that. You know, you, you're not actually going to be full ATP replenishment is not there yet. You, you are really not yet ready to hit another maximum lift, but you're not nope. doing that anyway because you're a beginner. Yep. But well, and, uh, go ahead. Oh, I was, you go ahead. Man. You know, um, go ahead. <laughs> Whenever I'm coaching, I, I always tell whoever, you know, is lifting with me that day, rely on your technique, you know, because when you do get tired and you, you I mean, you, that's when people a lot of times are like, all right, I'm tired. I got to try harder. And they try and rely on their strength and they miss. And why did I miss that? You know, why, why did I put it behind my head or why, why was it out front? And it's because, you know, they, they weren't relying on the technique. And so if you can constantly fall back on that technique, Yes, you may be tired and it may feel like you're moving slower or something like that, but the, the technique is what's getting stronger, and that's what we're practicing. That's really interesting. Okay, that's great. So let's talk a little bit about strength because obviously the technique's there, but you mentioned something about how, well, you know, if your technique's constantly getting better and you're getting stronger on the squats, the lifts themselves will go up. For a beginner. For a beginner. Yes. Right. And which, you know, most of the people listening to this are going to be well within that category. Yeah. Um, so about squatting, do you have some particular types of squat, you know, uh, programs or other things that you're a fan of? Does it mostly just squat a lot? Uh, what, what are your feelings about that? And also, are there exercises beyond your squats that you're a fan of in terms of strength training for a weightlifter? Um, I did a lot of, in the beginning, I did a lot of sets of five. You know, like maybe on, if I was lifting three days a week, on Monday I'd do a five set of five. Okay. And then by Friday, I would do like a one set of five. Um, and then maybe like a front squat workout in the middle, three sets of three, something like that. Um, but, I mean, there there's not a whole lot that I would do with a beginner that would just like, you know, like, all right, you're going to do ten sets of ten and then, you know, <laughs> come in and do four sets of seven or anything like that. Because yeah. I think doing a five set of five workout, you're not squatting a whole – lot of weight that's going to just kill you so yeah. that you can come in two days later and do some front squats and then come in two days later and do another set of five and not recover that weekend. And yeah. so five sets of five is just, it's a really solid workout that it's going to wear you out that day. You'll probably be sore the next day, but I think you're going to be good two days after that. Yeah. And so, um, and, and I also think that five sets of five really builds a whole lot of strength in a, in a beginner as well. You know, five, five reps is, you know, it's it gets to that point where it's it's a good amount of volume, sure. And and five sets, you know, you're you're getting in quite a bit of sets, and yeah. if you've got the right percentage of weight on the bar from your one rep max, it's going to really build that strength up. So nothing too specific, um, or nothing too crazy. I don't have any science behind that. It's all just personal experience. So yeah. Yeah. I'm sure someone could argue with me about it. And, <laughs> throw out all these science terms, but just out of personal experience, I've seen yeah. a lot of success with just five sets of five and sure. yeah. whatnot. Yeah, I think that, that uh, that's a, a pretty pretty common program for a reason because it does oh, yeah. it does tend to oh, yeah. especially if you're if you've never really done a lot of squatting in your life. That's a great way to, to get a good start for darn sure. Oh, yeah. Um how did your strength training like you know, you said that you know you spent a lot of years in the beginning on technical stuff but as your technique got better and better to the point where it is now, where it's mostly, you know, on, it's about as good as it's probably going to get. There, might, there are always going to be little things here and there, but, you know, the big issue for you now is just getting stronger. Yeah. How has the strength training changed for you over time? Um, well, when I started, I was doing something similar to the five sets of five. Um, and, and then as time went on, um, I remember a couple times, there, there was, there were some times whenever I would do like sets of ten, you know, maybe like two or three sets of ten. Okay. Uh, uh, I remember at one point I was maybe doing like one heavy set of ten, like on a Monday, and then um, by the end of the week I would do maybe like some sets of five. Okay. But it, it didn't really change. I, I mean, I, I was constantly growing like in size uh, I made my way to super heavy so <laughs> uh, I mean I was constantly growing and I never really hit a plateau until I turned about 18 and so 
for the most part, I stuck with that workout until it stopped working. Okay. Uh, whenever I turned about 18 years old, um, I started doing a whole lot of front squats. In fact, I think I, I don't think I was back squatting at all. Um, I I was doing uh, I was coming in in the mornings and working up to like a single in the front squat. Coming in in the evening and you know front squatting some doubles or some triples and I was squatting like twice a day, yeah, three times a week. But it was all front squats. From what I, I, I we I may have back squatted once a week. And so front squats became extremely important um, in my workouts because back squatting is just they kind of it just kind of stopped working. So front squatting was doing the job, um, and I probably did primarily all front squats there for like two years um, with maybe one one day a week with back squatting. Um, I think a lot of that had to deal with my injuries as well. Back squatting, putting the bar on my back, um, put a lot of pressure on my low back and hurt a lot. And front squatting took a little bit of that pressure off. So sure, sure. Um, I believe the front, a lot of the front squatting was because of that. But um, I got really strong with the front squats. I, I front squatted 235, which what? isn't anything crazy. But um, I think I, most I people squat. in the audience that would be most certainly considered crazy. Since oh. That's bigger <laughs> than their back squats. <laughs> well, uh, compared I, I, to like Klokov or something, it's not crazy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> crazy. But um, yeah, I think at one point I, I front or I definitely know I front squatted 235. That was my PR, and so and then my PR back squat was like 255. So they weren't okay. far off from each other. Front squatting was very very important. Um, I think it helped me build efficiency doing front squats because, you know, when you're front squatting with heavy weight like that very often, you learn how to bounce out of the hole. You learn how to get through that sticking point. Yeah. Um, yeah. You learn how to keep that chest up when you're standing up. And so it really helped me build efficiency with my cleans. Okay. And yeah. I was able to keep the amount of strength that I did have. It may not have been, you know, for what the level I wanted to compete at, it may not have been as much strength. But... Um, for the for the level I was competing at, I was able to keep my strength up with front squatting, and then recently, um, I've gotten rid of all my injuries. I've spent a lot of time rehabbing. I've switched everything to back squats. <laughs> so it's not hurting you anymore, the back squats. No, I I'm completely healthy. Oh, I have awesome. no injuries, and um, I I'm very thankful for that. And yeah. so. Um, I'm back to back squatting. I'm doing a, a little bit of a scaled down version of a, a Russian back squat program. Okay. Um, okay. It's a whole lot of volume, and um, it's actually doing really well for me strength wise. So I've I've been all over the place with my strength uh, <laughs> strength training. That's great. Well, some, yeah, something that's actually kind of surprising that you know a lot of people don't realize this, but um, I never did as a kid a lot of upper body strength. And so I never actually have had a strong upper body, and to this day I don't have a strong upper body. My best military press is only like 70 kilos. <laughs> Ever. Yeah. But so I, listening to I, this, if you do like CrossFit or something, there may be the one lift you can outlift Caleb Ward on is the military yes. press. <laughs> yes, that, that would be that would be the lift military press. Put the press in, I'll, I'll I'll take you back over. Uh, <laughs> But military press, I do not have a strong upper body. And so, but that, I, I actually had a talk about that with um, a good friend of mine. Is, um, she was telling me that there was, you know, an argument on a forum about the, um, you know, the relation between your military press and your jerk. And I don't think that there is much of one because I military press 70 kilos, <laughs> but I've jerked 203. Yeah. <laughs> And and so I think a lot of it, you know, I, I think I just had a really good technique with my jerk and my legs were strong. And so I think a lot of it, you know, I think there's more relation between your push press and your jerk than there is your military press and your jerk. Now, I think that my military press, if it would have been stronger, I probably would have been able to jerk more. But, um, I, I mean, I, I was able to keep it up with my clean. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know. That's interesting. That's you know, there's, there's a lot of talk about the idea that, um, uh, and I'm kind of in, I'm in total agreement here with you, uh, that you know the jerk is a little more closely related to your front squat weights, 
yeah. than it is to anything related to your upper body. I mean, other than oh. obvious lockout strength. I mean, you need some level yeah. of ability to hold it over your head. But other than that, uh, it's a leg exercise. I, I, I do agree with that. I, I definitely agree with that. And so getting a giant military press isn't necessarily something that's going to make an enormous difference. It might not hurt you. <laughs> Exactly, and that, and that was my point. I think my military press would have been stronger. It may have affected my jerk, but probably not by much. Right. I think the fact that I did a lot of front squats and um, I, I was able to move efficiently on my jerk, I think that that's what was the major you know, component to me jerking 203. Sure, yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting. I think uh, it's not actually as uncommon as one might think to have a large discrepancy between the jerk and the strict military press in a yeah. weightlifter. That oh, yeah. wimpy upper body strength <laughs> is pretty closely uh, <laughs> correlated with being a good weightlifter. Yeah. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying it's causal. I'm just saying that it's correlated. <laughs> yeah, probably so. <laughs> like doing a lot of pull-ups and things, that doesn't tend to happen a lot. <laughs> no, I, I think I can do like one or two pull-ups. I always tell people it's because I'm bottom heavy, but I think it's just the fact that I have no upper body strength. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, Marius Bujanowski could probably do a lot of pull-ups, and he's rather bottom heavy himself, but he's also yeah. upper body heavy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, weightlifters, it's just, it's just an, an odd fact about the sport uh, that it is extremely lower body uh, 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 dependent. Yeah, it's not okay. that much in the upper body, other than just broadly speaking, core strength, which really is just everything in your torso. Yeah, being able to stabilize heavy, heavy weights over your head, but um, you know the the beach muscles don't play a big role. <laughs> no, I, I love it when you tell people that you're a weightlifter, and of course everyone asks how much you bench, but yeah, my which is usually favorite. pathetic for a weightlifter. Yeah. <laughs> My my favorite action that people do is they'll come over and try and fill my arms, and I'm like, <laughs> I mean, you're not going to be impressed, so I mean, go ahead, but. <laughs> yeah, getting into a pose down is probably not going to be very. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not going to be good for a weightlifter. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of misconceptions about Olympic weightlifting, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay. Yeah. You know, speaking of misconceptions and weightlifting, the, the sport of weightlifting as a as something people know about has changed dramatically over the 10 years you've been in this sport. Oh, my gosh. When you first started, uh, there was no such thing as YouTube. Didn't exist. There was no Probably. Facebook. No. You know, blogs were virtually non-existent. There were a few out there, but, you know, nobody really read them. Uh, and the internet just was not a big thing. And weightlifting in the United States was almost completely off the radar. Oh, yeah. I mean, completely. Nobody knew what the heck it was. Now, with a whole host of those, all the things I said, plus CrossFit and a few other things, uh, weightlifting is really going through a hell of a renaissance. People know what it is now. I mean, like, not everybody does, but if you're into any kind of serious hardcore fitness, odds are you actually know that Olympic weightlifting is a sport. <laughs> yes. And, and as silly as that the... sounds, that's a big deal to us. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it used to be that the bobsled was way better known, you know, than Olympic lifting. But now people kind of know what it is. Uh, what are your feelings about this newfound growth? Uh, what you think could be done to help keep it going and maybe get even better? And... Uh, uh, you know, how you think that's going to affect the sport as a whole over time? Well, um, I'm extremely excited about the growth in weightlifting. I think it's awesome that, you know, when you show up to weightlifting meets that there's more people there, more and more people are, are wanting to be a part of weightlifting. And, yeah. you know, yeah. um, and, and maybe not even so much that they want to be a lifter, but they want to be a spectator. And so I think, first of all, that is extremely right. awesome, and it's very exciting for us. Um, I, as far as I think to keep it going, um, I think that our next steps should be to, you know, get it into high schools, get it into, you know, youth programs, because those are going to be the people who stick with it. You know, um, a, a lot of people, you know, get into CrossFit, 
you know, but a lot of people who get into CrossFit are also, you know, adults with good paying jobs because that's. See, you said uh, CrossFit, people who do CrossFit are often adults who have good paying jobs. Yeah. And so, you know, they've done a great job with themselves getting into it and getting their kids into it, but that's kind of already been started. So, um, right. So I'm not something that we know is working, and we that's great. But what's the next step? Exactly. So I think that if you know we could get into youth programs at YMCA's and high schools, something. I'm just throwing ideas out there. Yeah. That that's going to be what continues the growth of the sport. Um, I just uh, I know that in Florida that they have weightlifting in high school. It's a high school sport. Now it's not snatch and clean and jerk. It's bench press and clean, but the amount of people who have transferred from bench press and clean to snatch and clean and jerk has been awesome. But that's one state out of 50. And so I think the more states that could get something similar into the, you know, into their high schools, you know, a a coach who just knows about the Olympic lifts or something um, is going to continue to grow and grow and grow the sport. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's actually, you know, a lot of people have been putting it into college programs and stuff like that. But, you know, those are athletes who are already dedicated to another sport. And so I think if we could just get it started right before college, that some people would say, all right, I didn't get a football scholarship and I can wait, lift weights, you know, at a CrossFit yeah. gym yeah. or in, anywhere in town. Um, I'm going to stick with this. And I, I think that we'd see a lot of growth in the sport with that. That's great. Um, That's great. It's crazy. Um, I, I wanted to say this whenever you were talking about it. Whenever I was 12 years old, I was completely obsessed with weightlifting. I mean, people probably were annoyed with how obsessed I was with it. I would sit um, with our dial-up internet connection at my house um, on usaweightlifting.org, and they had a results page, and I would just read results. I I could have told you some random person's name from Pennsylvania and what they lifted and what they weighed. <laughs> and I I just that that's how, you know, that that's how I would, you know, get to know weightlifters. Or that that's what yeah. I would do whenever I was a kid. Um Mark Ripito gave me hundreds, not hundreds, probably probably like 50. So I exaggerated, sorry. Uh, he probably gave me like 50 USA weightlifting magazines when I was training at, um, uh, at Wichita Falls Weightlifting. Yeah. And I had all of those magazines memorized. I had read every article. They were just torn up. I took them to college with me whenever I moved. I mean, the, yeah. those things were just like, I loved the USA weightlifting magazine. Um, and it's sad that they, I mean, they, I think they do an online one now, but it's sad that that's kind of gone away. Yeah. But I, mean, I have YouTube, so. Right. I so I, I give all my info there, but right. yeah, that's that's how I used to do it. That was the old school way. Yeah, yeah. That, I think that's important. You know, the the fascination that's possible for a twelve year old. Yeah, you know that more if getting more and more people, well, young kids, uh, interested in the sport, or even just showing them the sport, inevitably it means that a certain subset of them will be like. You, where they just get absolutely, totally obsessed, which is great. Yeah. Because that's what you want. <laughs> For any kid to be obsessed with it, you know, kid who's into music is going to be obsessed with guitar magazines or something or whatever. You know, like it happens. Kids just find a thing, they like that thing, and they get really deep into it. And that's how they become really great at it later in life. Oh, yeah. Because they just immerse themselves. Oh, yeah. In a way oh. that most adults just are not going to be able to do, even just for practical reasons. Completely. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. No, I, I think that getting just into just getting into a younger age group is, you know, is what's going to continue to grow this sport. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, all right, we're getting up near about the hour mark, so I'm going to wrap this up a little bit. But, man, it's been awesome talking to you. Um, yeah. So your Thanks. goals now are you're, you are getting back into training again. Do you have uh, your sights set on anything specific? Um, you know, short term – um, my main goals aren't, don't really lie with weightlifting. I, I want to, um, get into school and finish that up. Um, my, my big goals for the future is I want to help the USA qualify an Olympic team for 2016 and I want to be on that team. So, awesome. you know, um, 2014, 2015, those are both the two important world championships. And so, you know, my goal is to just stay strong 
you know, c keep my strength moving, not necessarily win national championships next year or, um, you know, make the world team for 2013. I, I mean, if those things happen, I'd be thankful and I would do my best. Um, but my real goals start for 2014 and 2015 and continue into 2016. I, I would love for us to have strong showings at those world championships and then be able to send a full Olympic team. And so yeah. um, my, my goal is for the Olympics and for those world championships. So short term, I just want to stay strong, get into school, finish that up. Right. And to the, come 2014, y'all better watch out. That's, that's Caleb Ward season. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Well, thanks a lot. All right. So if you're listening to this, make sure you go check out weightliftingacademy.com. Uh, and I'll have everything up in the show notes, but how you can, you know, keep keep track of all those USA weightlifting numbers like Caleb did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Thanks for listening, and thanks for being on the show, man. I appreciate it. No problem. See you soon.